guys, welcome to the Blood Flame Samurai build guide. In this guide, I'll be going over the Blood Flame Samurai build. It's all about looking cool with the excellent samurai fashion, the weapon you're using with the trusty katanas, the incantation, which is the Blood Flame. The guide will explain how to get these items, mostly focusing on the essential items, the reasoning behind the stats, and so how well does a build it perform in PvE, in PvP, and how does it feel in general to play. Thank you guys for those who watched the teaser trailer, and thank you for your patience for waiting. It's now time to get into the guide. Purchase your tracks today. First things first, great runes. So every time you beat a boss, you get a great rune. So for example, God Godric attribute a uh, great rune. Um, I haven't got the other boss, I only beat the uh, red up. So Godric's great rune, what it does, it allows you to raise all your attributes. And in order to activate this, you need to use your arc runes. These things here, but I've already activated it. Um, so, uh, uh, so you can see that on the top left corner, it's glowing. It means that it's active. What it does, it raises my overall stats, uh, attributes, all sorts of things. It gives me more health, lower equipment loads, um, raises my FP, raises my stamina. Like it is a huge quality of life. And I've seen a lot of YouTube uh, YouTube videos and streamers uh, where people have not been utilizing the arc runes or the great runes to uh, make themselves more effective in the PVE environment. Um, that's one of the main things anyway uh, so let's talk about the actual build uh, so first thing I need to do I need to level up so whilst I'm leveling up I'm just going to talk about my build so at the moment um, you can see my base stats here so I have Vigor 31 Vigor I'm currently level 74 15 Mind 15 Endurance 24 Strength 24 Dex 9 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 20 Arcane. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the Vigor. Vigor is very important, especially from a PvE and PvP standpoint. This will allow you to survive some of the craziest attacks in the game. And plus, when you boost it with the Arc Rune, uh, let's see how much higher it goes. So let's go to status. I get 39 Vigor. So... I get a huge XP boost once I've activated this arc rune in the PvE environment. Unfortunately, it does not work in the PvP environment. Um, okay. So let's go to mind. Uh, so the mind, the reason why I'm using mind is for summons. I, I don't like co-oping to be honest. I do prefer summons and to be uh, to be solo when done. Not, uh, like 99% of my boss battles were all done using the summons. I really enjoy the summons. Um, so um, I put 84. 15 so i can get 100 fp when i put the uh, arc room which allows me to uh bring, bring in one of the stronger summons which was the knight that he saw when i was fighting the dragon uh, 15 endurance to be honest i haven't put too much into endurance i'm gonna keep it at 15 for the most part um i just want that 100 stamina clean um and it also allows me to raise my equipment load which is quite important um to be honest it, it does I would potentially be leveling this in the future, but um, at the moment I'm currently focusing on my Vigor. So I'm going to be raising that uh, up, but not just yet. And Dexterity, then I'm going to uh, do my Strength and Dexterity. So the reason why I have 24 Strengths and 25 Dexterity is because I wasn't sure at the beginning um, of where to, or what type of weapon or build I want to do. but. If anything, because um, you can get the thing called the Sacred Tear after you beat the second boss uh, after Godric in the lake area. So, Rena. Uh, I think that's her name, Rena. The Queen, basically. Um, yeah, so after you, you beat her, you can respect, and which allows you to change that. So, when I'm, I'm not going to respect just yet. I think I'll respect around level 120 uh, just to optimize my builds for what I want to achieve. Um, but right now I'm in basically in the mid game, um, so I'll show you where what kind of side is. So I've explored a, quite a bit of the map, 
Um, I did say spoiler warnings ahead, so I've explored quite a bit on the map. I'm just here about to enter the final area. I have to beat the bosses in the, within the capital. I've not done that. I also need to beat, beat Radan down here. I've not done that. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, so uh, I wasn't sure initially what to uh, put put my uh, what build or weapon I want to use. But since I'm going with Samurai, uh, I'm, I recommend putting at least 18 uh, strength. Uh, no, uh, let's say 20 strength. At least get 20 strength and then putting the rest in dexterity. So I'll be aiming for around 40 dexterity. And when it comes to intelligence, I don't really use anything that requires intelligence. Um, or the only thing I'm doing, I'm using incantations. Uh, that's the, in terms of spell wise. So I'm not using anything based on intelligence. So I've not put any points into that. Uh, when it comes to faith, um, you need at least, I'd recommend at least uh, 10, 10 to 12 faith um, so that you can use uh, the certain incantations we will be going through just in a moment. And then uh, the reason why I went for 20 arcane is because in the future, I want to I wanna be able to uh, use the, the blood, uh, the rivers of blood katana. That's one of the weapons I'm planning on using. So what I want to do uh, in the future, uh, when I get to the, the uh, next region, I want to use a combination of the, uh, so dual wield, a combination of the blood, uh, rivers of blood katana and the current katana that I'm using, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Okay, um, so let's do some leveling. So right now, I think I'm just gonna pump it into vigor. I don't really need much else. Um, so I want to get to 40 Vigor as soon as possible, which will allow me to beat most bosses without if I'm not playing any stupid. Uh, especially with the Arcane Boost, it's going to take me to the whole nother level. A whole nother level. Okay, so let's do that. So after I've gotten my 25 Stamina and at least 20 Strength, I'd recommend 30 Stamina, uh, sorry, Stamina Dexterity. Um, and 20 strength uh, for like a mid game, mid to early game. Um, you want to be pumping into vigor and dex, get your faith to 10, uh, sorry, 12 at least, and get your arcane to um, 12 at least as well. And once you've done that, uh, continue to level those up. Uh, I've leveled arcane pretty much up straight away. Then put a little bit into dex, make sure that it's balanced. Put a little bit into strength because I wanted to try out certain weapons. And let's not forget the mind, you know, the mind is what allows you to use the spells and we are technically casting spells so putting a little bit into mind and then endurance as well for equipment load it helps. Uh, the rest I'm going to do Vigor. Vigor is a really high priority. Um, if you're not sure about anything, always put, you can't go wrong putting points into Vigor. It helps out a lot. Uh, okay. Alright guys, so first thing I'm uh, recovering is the armor. So let's get into it. So this is the starting samurai class armor. It's called the Lands of the Reed's Helm. It looks pretty darn epic in my opinion. Pure samurai-ness right there. Flashing for days. Alright, let's look at some of the stats. So it has decent stats. It's, I would con consider it light medium armor. Uh, the good thing about this armor is very versatile uh, and very balanced in terms of resistances. So it has good resistances against magic, uh, fire, lightning, holy. Um, it is actually a decent armor. Um, I'd say one of the best starting armors if you're starting out especially. Um, I've used this and it's still viable in, in the mid game I'm currently in. I'm, I'm in like mid to late game and it's still viable. Um, I've been using it for a lot of my playthrough and it's served me very well. Uh, in terms of its performance uh, in PvP, um, it's decent. Uh, the da main downside of this armor, it has incredibly low poise. So, for example, in PvP, poise is basically what allows you to um, not be staggered when people attack you. So, for example, if someone's making a strike and you're making a strike, person who has more poise they'll be able to continue their combo so their combo won't be stopped so if i don't have enough poise um my combo is likely to be interrupted so and you can also reach a state where you're sort of stun locked so you're stunned and you're locked in in the combo um so poise is what actually allows you to get out of that 
um, and that's the main downside of this. But the main strength of this, it's incredibly lightweight. Um, and like I said, it has good resistances against magical abilities. Uh, in terms of physical uh, damage, it's not the best, uh, I must say. But, um, okay, so in terms of location of where to get it, I'm going to start playing a quick video. So let's go over to the Isolated Nation Merchant Trap. Uh, I forgot what it's in Kaled, yeah, in Kaled. So we're going to go from the first step. And let's say, so you didn't start off as a samurai and you still want to use this armor. You just come all the way over here uh, to the isolated merchant tracks and I'll show you. Oh gosh, uh, I should have not uh, come here at night. Oh my days. Uh, yep, I'll be back shortly, just a second. Oh my days. <laughs> Well, I didn't want you guys to see the, me dying in embarrassment. Forget that ever happened right there. Uh, typical Dark Souls hits you when you least expect it. Okay, so, well, the good thing is, um, I can show you the effects, the power of the Rune Arc I was talking about. So currently, without the power, um, these are my stats. Uh, if you compare them to the previous one, they're a bit lower. So at the moment, I'm seeing I'm 38 Vigor, 15 Mind, uh, 18 endurance. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, let me remove some equipment. Uh, we're gonna get to the equipment guys. Don't worry We're gonna get to the equipment. So okay right now we are pure base stats So I'm on 35 vigor 15 bind 15 endurance 24 strength uh, 25 dexterity uh, I spoke previously about why I put uh, points into these and when I put the arc rule, let's see what it does so uh, Here we go Okay, wow, look at that, five. It goes up by five. So yeah, five points into everything goes up. So you can see it's a very, very, very effective tool. And from flowing on to there, we can finally talk about the talismans. Okay, so the first one, I'd say my favorite talisman out of these is this one, Radigan's uh, Scar Seal. Um, and in order to get it, um, I'm going to cut a video shortly showing where to get it, which is now. Um, you have to go to this location um, with, around the Weeping Evergold and you fight the boss there. Um, and then you'll be able to get the Radagon Seal. Okay, let's go back into it. Okay. Second one I like to use. I'm just going to talk about the favorite one. Uh, this one, uh, Tree's Favor. Uh, raises maximum HP and stamina and equipment load. Okay, before we do that, sorry, I forgot to show you what um, the effect of Radagon Seal. So what it does, um, as you can see, it adds an extra three points into my Vigor. Um, let me see, how many points is that? An extra three points into my, uh, yeah. So basically adds three points to my Vigor. Three points to my dexterity, three points to my endurance. Um, let me see what else does it do? Sorry, I actually didn't calculate this properly. Okay, let's equip it again. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so uh, three points into my endurance. Basically, it increases it by three points pretty much. Um, so I've gone up in, uh, so with the arc ring, I've gone up with my, what do you call it? Uh, I've gone up five levels. Plus these, I've gone up an extra uh, eight levels in the most important stats, which are obviously vigor, strength and dexterity, and uh, a little bit in, I believe in faith and uh, in int intelligence. Let me see, has my intelligence gone up? Yeah, because of the seal. Okay, my intelligence hasn't been touched. Uh, my faith hasn't been touched either. So yeah, vigor, strength, and dexterity, basically. And then we have the green turtle ta uh, talisman, which raises your stamina recovery speed. That's I'd recommend using that as well. 
Uh, in order to get this one, I'm going to cut to a video in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. Uh, you have to fight the boss around the summoner village. And uh, you should be able to find like a location within the ruins, um, which will lead on the ground. And then that will enable you to get the green turtles talisman spill. Very useful. The thing about this build, you have to be aggressive. And this really allows you to be aggressive. Especially when having to chase people down who are running away to heal. Or let's say you've bled someone and they're on really low HP. This will allow you to do so effectively and chase them. And this Urchi's Favour, um, it's a very common one. I think most people know where to get that one. Um, you can get it very early on in the game. It's probably the first good talisman I got. Uh, raises maximum HP and equipment load. Again, quality of life makes it easier. Um, let me see how much it affects. So my HP, if I take it off, you see it raises it slightly. Not by much, but slightly. And it also raises my stamina by 7 points as well. But yeah, just a little quality of life. Um, another option as well, let's say if you don't want to, if you don't care too much about the stamina, you can also use the... This, this one which raises your dexterity just gives you the extra damage especially because you're using the katana and speaking about the katana okay so this one the washing pole the beautiful long ass katana my favorite weapon it's been with me since the my early days back in limgrave um yeah it served me very well hence why i got it to plus 15 it's not at max upgrades the max upgrade is plus 25 um we're gonna get there eventually i'll probably upgrade it to plus 25 once uh, once i'm done with you know what my stats and leveling um but yeah it's just really good it's a really good katana it's nice and long so uh, you can compete with a lot of weapons um it is really good it's an excellent chase weapon so let's say people are running away from you this running attack, really good at chasing people. Let's do it two-handed as well. Really good at chasing people. Also R2, so with the heavy one, running heavy, really good at clutching people. Um, the only downside with the moveset, I'd say, is the, the heavy charge. It's, um, because it's a thrust, it can't... Because the good thing about this game, the hitboxes are really accurate. But the problem is I've missed a quite a, fr a lot of thrusts because, because of how accurate the hitboxes are. So sometimes I'm, I'm running and a person moves slightly and I'm missing them. It would be S tier, no, not S tier, A tier if, if it was a slash. If this running attack was a slash heavy as well, that would be so good. But we got this, so, and, uh, and the one-handed one is also a slash as well, which is good. But yeah. And in order to get this weapon, you need to be an NPC called uh, Euro. I'm gonna to cut to a screenshot of him in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so with Yura, what you need to do, um, so you have options. So, me personally, um, I would recommend doing his first quest where you get the Reduvia Dagger. So you go in and assassinate someone and you get Reduvia Dagger, which is that crazy blood dagger I'll show you. This one. This one does the has that crazy, you know, you see those guys Doing that, you know that special attack? Yeah. That's a really good, really, really good dagger. I don't use it because I'm not really a dagger person. I said I'm a more of a samurai. But it's a really good weapon, this one. So I recommend doing that. And then afterwards, uh, I kill them in order to get this weapon. So basically, you kill the NPC to get this weapon. And he drops it after you kill him. You have to fight him a little bit. He's not really that strong. But uh, you kill him. Um, the other option, which is you can do his whole quest line. So once you've done this whole quest line, um, eventually you do it, you do it, you fight a couple more NPCs. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the other ones drop. Um, but eventually he, warning, spoiler warning, he dies and he drops his weapon anyway. So either way, he's going to die. Either way. So <laughs> so if whichever option, you can either bring his death about sooner or, uh, or later, depending on, on yourself. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the weapon itself. So it's good, has great physical damage. Like I said, it is upgraded. It also has decent bleed, uh, 45 bleed. That, when, when you upgrade, that mostly stays the same. I don't think it goes up much. I've also, um, 
So I've also done uh, done some uh, scaling with my uh, Ash of War, which I will get to in a second. Um, so yeah, so that's the katana. Um, really good weapon. Um, I would, in terms of PVE, I would put it as let's say, let me think. I'll put it at a high B, low A tier. Um, it's really good at applying bead and on horseback. Um, it's great, absolutely great weapon on horseback. Um, if you like, prefer to fight with a horse, this is a solid, solid, solid katana. Um, I, this 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 build allows me to kill dragons like crazy because all I'm doing is running, and because it has such a long weapon, I'm able to hit the dragons quite effectively. Um, okay, let's go down. And so I've also scaled it for decks. So the stats that you see, and I've because of the Ash of War, which I'm gonna get to right now. And guys, if you have any questions about the builds, feel free to ask. Um, okay, so let's go to Ashes of War. Okay, so me personally, depending on what you're doing, there's two Ashes of War that I like to use. So the other one. Is the blood slash? Um, I like to keep it standard because if I if you add the blood version of it, you can't buff your weapon with the blood flame, which we'll get to very soon. Um, I like to keep it standard, but what it does, it stabs you, and you do an excellent slash. This this ability is a boss killer. It does so much damage, especially against low level NPCs. It staggers them as well. Um, it's just a great, really great Ash of War. The only downside, like I said, it does damage you a little bit, but when you get to my HP level, it's not really an issue, to be honest. Um, this is pretty much nothing for me, but when you're a bit lower level, it can hurt. Um, so be careful with that. It's also good, decent in PvP. The thing is, if you catch people off guard, it's really good. It's really, really good if you catch people off guard. Um, you can do some nastiness with it. Uh, I'm gonna cut to uh, if you saw, if you saw in the montage. I'm gonna cut to a build showing me in PvP action right now. Okay, so as you can see, it staggered the guy and it and it slashed him nicely. It absolutely absolutely destroyed him, which is. It just shows the power of it. It's a really good one. But uh, when you get to like more experienced players, a lot of players know it's coming. So um, you can get countered really easily in PvP. In PvP, in PvE, sorry, it's it's just absolutely great. Absolutely great. I recommend it. And the second one, which I'm currently running with, is the Bloodhound Step. Oh my days. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite Ash of War. Um, it doesn't do any damage, but what it allows you to do is this. Look at that. You basically get the best dodge in game, insane speed. Oh my days! It, I, can, I, I can love talking about this one because it is my favorite thing ever. Um, it's just too cool. I mean, you disappear and then you appear. One thing I like to do. So let's say you know you get a lot of people using the Ash of War to uh, spam you in PvP. And so, for example, you get spammed by the, um, let's say, Moonville Katana, the, the Ice, uh, the Frost thing, Ground Pound thing, I'm not sure, I'm butchering the names. Um, the Lightning Spells, Lightning Spears, you know, you get all sorts of um, horrible, horrible abilities chucked at you. This thing absolutely counters it. Absolutely counters it. Um, I can dodge pretty much any ability. Or another really bad one is um, the dragon heads. Oh my days, the dragon heads are so annoying on PvP. Um, a lot of people, what they'll do, they use the dragon heads to put uh, status effects on you. So they'll put use the rock one, they'll use the frost one. And this this really allows you to escape that. I'm going to cut to a video showing that right now. Okay, so you saw the guy was trying to kill me, and uh, so I was getting ganked, and the guy was trying to kill me with the fire breath from the dragon attack, and I used my my ability 
So the bloodhound. Oh, I ran out of uh, thingy. So I used the bloodhound step to be able to counter that by creating an incredible amount of distance, a uh, rapid amount of speeds, which almost gives me inv invincibility frames, and um, to create a massive distance between him, him and myself, and uh, as well as the other two gunkers. So, and it also allows me to do that, and then after I'm, I've created that distance, I can just go away and just heal, and chug my Estus, and then chug back in. Um, another thing I recommend in terms of the Estus, that reminds me, just one second, let's go to the here. Let's get to Flask. Um, okay, uh, how do we do it again? Sorry. Yeah, Mixed Wondrous Physique. Okay, so I'm using the Crimson Crystal Teal, so the one that gives you health, and uh, the Cerulean Hidden Tear. I don't remember where to get these. Um, look it up on the wiki. I'm going to link the wiki below for Extra Life. Awesome stuff. Check out the website. It will tell you where to get everything that I've not covered. So whenever you, if you're not sure, refer to that. Um, I'm gonna put it all in the description. Okay. So yeah, what this allows me to do it allows me to once I consume it. Let me put shrug it. I can do unlimited spells, so you you don't run out of FP as long as the effect is after. So let's say if I'm in real trouble and I'm about uh, 70, 25 percent down, I chug this Aestus in, in PvP and then I start dodging like crazy. Create distance and put a lot of chase into the enemy, allow me to cut them and really like make them basically use all abilities without being able to touch me. This is one of the reasons why I love Bloodhound Step. Um, okay, so in order to get, get Bloodhound Step, you need to fight the knight. You know the, the cheese tactic that everyone's been using. Um, where you basically get that. So you spawn here at night time. Uh, uh, was it Lenny's Rise? Let's go there. So you spawn here at night time and uh, you, you fight a knight, like one of those black knights on the horses, and you run up the hill, and when he runs up the hill and chases you, he basically dies of poison and gets instant death, and that's how you get the bloodhound step. Pretty simple stuff. Um, yeah, I recommend this. Put this on different weapons. Okay, guys, so let's get into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the blood flame. Which is the weapon buff that I've been you can see me use throughout the video and on the teaser. So the blood flame requires 12 faith and 10 arcane. And it chants the right hand with the blood flame. So what the blood flame does, let's activate it. So what it does, it it kind of works like a fire bleed effect. So it's a mix of fire and bleed. And so let's say if you slash someone, um so you do the initial bleed damage, but what it does, it adds extra ticks so the bleed damage sort of lingers like a fire so it kind of burns that burns and bleed basically if, if that's the best way to describe it um it's a really good spell it doesn't require much um to use it like i said 12 faith and uh, 10 arcane so it doesn't have much requirement and it also lasts a very long time and when you use it it just amplifies any bleed weapon so um if you use it it, it will really you know allow you to block uh, bleed, uh, bleeds apply sorry apply bead more more effectively and more frequently um it just it literally is a buff in every sense of work where it makes any weapon um which has infused bleed build uh, a lot stronger um so hence why i'm using it on the Naga, nagakiga and yeah it's just a really reliable spell um it looks amazing i think it's the best looking one out of all the ones especially if you're going for a more dark edgy build or for example if you uh, look at my channel there's a star wars build where i use this buff on the twin blade and makes it look like to have dual lightsabers it's just a really cool effect and uh, against bosses it, it does great work against bosses um like i said it just amplifies this build to the next level um pvp it's excellent in pvp um for example there's times where i've slashed a guy and if, because of the blood flame um let, let's say he runs away to heal but because the blood flame is still on it the effect is still on him what it does um yeah so the guy will for example roll away i can't reach him but then all of a sudden he gets bleeds he gets bled because the effect is still on him so it's really good in that sense um yeah i'd highly recommend it in terms of where to get it so you're gonna need to go to the rose church and i'm gonna cut to a clip uh, showing how to get get it right now So 
but yeah, you get it from that teardrop scarab, um, which is uh, them little roly poly dung beetle things. Um, so yeah, you get the blood flame with that. Really easy to get. Um, you either have to travel to um, Lun Lunera, Lunia, sorry, Lunia River. You know that big water place, and uh, it's it's really good. Um, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, I think you only have to beat uh, one boss um, in the Stormville Castle, Godric, I believe. And then you can you'll be able to get this buff. So it's really good for like early mid game, and I've used it pretty much for most of my playthrough because um, I've been mostly using the bleed build, and it's been really reliable. I'd really highly recommend it. And I'm gonna show a PV clip of it in action. So enjoy, and also for those who watched the full guide all the way through, a thank you so much. Um, there's more coming as well. Um, so be stay tuned. Uh, I think the next build I'm gonna do, I'm working on uh, a werewolf build. So based around, you know, the wolf armor and the wolf thing and also using claws uh, as well as the bl uh, blood flame. And that is still a work in progress. I'm still not complete. It's still not where I want it to be, but be tuned for that and expect some teasers around that as well. And uh, thank you for those who watch. I know it's not the um, most straightforward, quick guide, but I wanted to go, you know, a bit more in depth into what, why, and the reasonings behind, you know, I went, why, why I picked this certain things and, and that. So I hope it was helpful, um, as that was the ultimate aim, to just to help you guys, you know, create this build. And in terms of the future, where the build is heading in the future, once I get to the new region, uh, I'm going to be acquiring, like I said, the Rivers of Blood Katana. I'm going to be applying, um, there's a spell called uh, Sem uh, Seppuku, Seppuku, I'm butchering the name, and where you basically stab yourself to apply bleed to the weapon that you're using is really good. So, for example, if you want to du dual wield it, um, it's an Ash of War, if you want to dual wield it, um, you can get bleed uh, a bleed buff on both of those dual wielded weapons, so it's pretty good. Uh, I'm also going to get a cool samurai armor in this area as well, uh, which I'm looking forward to getting. But, like I said, again, thank you guys for all those who watched the guide.